All right, guys, before we dive back into hopefully finishing these stairs, we do want to talk a little bit about a cash out refi that you just saw us close on because we pulled out almost $80,000 in equity and only increased our overall monthly debt service payment by a hundred bucks. And I just feel like this is a really great example of why you need to stop analyzing and stop worrying and just go take down your first or your next property because this deal that we just cashed out refied was our first property that we bought a few years ago. So in 2017, Kyle and I bought our first property and it was an up down foreclosed duplex. We bought it, we renovated it, we house hacked it, and then we eventually placed some really good tenants. And what was then a base hit has really turned into the foundation of our entire portfolio. And we always say that real estate is very forgiving in the long run, just like stocks, time in the market really matters. So while this property wasn't the best deal then, it has definitely served us really well since we've owned it. All right, so let me just like quick give you some 2017 numbers for context, so you know what I'm talking about. So we bought this property for $117,000. We put about $70,000 into the renovation and then we cash out refied then just to pull out some of the renovation costs. We didn't you know, go up to 70 or 75% LTV. While we house hacked it for a year, we were only paying $45 a month to live, which was amazing. And then when we moved out, we were able to cash flow just under $300 a month with a 7% cash on cash return. Well, we were very happy with these numbers considering it's a very low maintenance property and in a very nice area. This is not the zero dollars in a deal, infinite return that everyone loves to see that we actually were able to do on property number five. We did a whole deep dive on this property, how we found it, how we funded it, how we burned it, and a link to that video is in the description below. But that is not the focus right now. What is the focus is how this first property helped us grow our entire portfolio. So the first way was really just giving us the experience and confidence we needed to buy more properties because the first one is mentally and emotionally by far the hardest because there are just so many unknowns. Analysis paralysis is real. We know it far too well. So this property really helped us get over that hump and prove to ourselves that yes, we can do this, we could be real estate investors. The second way this property was able to help us really grow a portfolio was by taking the equity that we were growing and putting it back to work by opening up a home equity line of credit, a HELOC, what a lot of people call it. Um, through equity pay down and appreciation, we were able to take out a $50,000 line of credit and over the last two years, we've been able to use this twice. Once to fund and renovate property number five, which we just talked about, and two, to renovate this unit we're sitting in right now. Both times we paid it back and it's just like a revolving bank. You become your own bank, which is amazing. And the third way is putting the equity in this property to work even harder by doing the cash out refi that you just saw us close on. So the other day I was on Stessa and on the dashboard there was a little notification and it said, hey, did you know you have 50% equity in this property? And I was like, for reals? So I looked into it, ran the numbers, and yeah, thanks to appreciation, thanks to principal pay down, we were able to you know, gain a lot of equity in this place. And at first I used to think that's a really good thing, and it is, but then I learned about return on equity, and basically every month that you pay down your principal and your property appreciates, your return on equity actually goes down, so you're not putting the money you have stored into this property to work. So after thinking about it, we realized doing a cash out refi actually made sense. We started the process and rental rates have gone up. Interest rates have gone down and all in all, even after pulling out all this money, our monthly payment only went up by $100. Considering that we will now have over $80,000 to invest in real estate, this was like a no brainer for us. All right. So what's the numbers look like now, right? Cause we're pulling out all this money. So, after closing, we're still going to be cash flowing about $200 a month, but with an infinite cash on cash return, which we love to see. And we're still going to have over 30% equity in this property. So I'm, I don't really consider us over leveraged. And is this deal now a home run? Of course, we'd like to be cash flowing more, but the fact that a lot of our money is now pulled out and we can go take that 80,000 and go get a 10 to 20% return on another property is where this long-term strategy really starts to shine. So basically the big lesson here is always keep that money working. Don't keep it tied up in the properties, but obviously everyone's strategies are different. Do what's best for you. And now let's get back to finishing these stairs. Yo, what up? Back with you. 
and kicking the week off by jumping back into these stairs. And we left you guys with the tread. We painted it with that uh, with that stone and patio paint. Um, it's kind of like an exterior interior paint. Uh, we'll jump back into painting the risers and then doing the trim and then hopefully we'll be done. I never had to think about it again. You say never again? We got to do this. The staircase going up to the third floor too. <laughs> Well, at least we know exactly what we're doing this time. That's true. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for that reminder. I was all excited. All right, let's get to work. Risers are painted, so while I wait for them to dry, I'm going to switch out this railing. So uh, I got a nice like red oak railing that I'm going to swap out for this round guy. And this is a pretty long run, so now I just got to get a measurement. So if Lauren could do the honors. I can. I'm going to say 158. 158. Cool. How nervous is this making? If you get pan anything. <laughs> I offered him like a paint drop cloth in the basement, know exactly where it is. No, 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 I'm just gonna do it like this. It's like he wants to get a divorce or something. Whoa, that's dramatic. All right, I'm stealing the paint brush from Kyle. I'm gonna put plastic wrap down because I like these floors too much. Is that a risk you're willing to take? Oh my god, I'm not flexible. I'm not as mobile as I once was. <laughs> Dude, this color looks great. Dude, I must say. So the last couple days, really this whole week, has been a little tricky trying to finish these stairs. Kyle and I both still work full-time jobs and they have been quite demanding this week before the holidays and so we just haven't had time to really do anything else. It is 6.30 and I'm gonna poly these stairs before I go to work because it's like the only time we can do it before this video comes out in two days. So let's wake up, have our coffee, get painting, and then we'll go to work. Gotta go outside, buddy. Go ahead, go get them. Always water before coffee. We can do it. We can do it. So now it's a little tricky because I do have to get ready for work still, but once I poly the stairs, I can no longer come upstairs. So I kind of have to like half get ready now, bring everything I need for work downstairs. It's like too much logistics for the morning, but we're just gonna make it happen. And that's it. I don't wear a lot of makeup, so nice and easy. All right, I got the clothes I'm gonna wear to work today. Let's bring everything downstairs. And then I think we could get started. OK, 
Okay, I'm thinking it would be smart to start up top and work my way down. Obviously, I almost kind of just started on the first step. No, no. All right, Polly is done. It's about eight o'clock, so quick change, and uh, I'll get going to work, and then Kyle and I will take care of this tomorrow or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We've had enough with the stairs, so we're actually gonna go bring some materials over to next door. We've been having them shipped to our house, but taking up way too much space. And I actually haven't seen this side in like a month. It's not in my lane, so I've just not been worrying about it. We have a bunch of stuff that we've already pre-ordered at Home Depot, and they're nice enough to actually enable you to hold it and not get it delivered until you're ready. So with the way that stock is and shelf life of things, it's like we don't know if they're going to be available and how long they're going to be available. So while they were available, we ordered everything. Now it's just sitting ready, waiting to be delivered. Yeah, buddy. So we will start with the good news. Since the last time we left you guys, we have had rough inspections on all trades. So fire and electrical have both passed. The fire we did need to, because we did a full gut, add hardwired smoke detectors. Both of those are passed and we're good to go. So we're done with them. The bad news, we have failed twice for plumbing. This is a good example of why you definitely need to check with your local construction office on what is inspectable and what isn't. You could err on the side of caution and just assume everything is inspectable. I have always been under the assumption if you're replacing same for same, then it's not inspectable because it's just swapping something out. Follow me. For the kitchen plumbing, it wasn't a clean swap in and out because we did move the kitchen sink from over here to under the window. So the new waistline and water lines needed to be inspected. In the bathroom is kind of where I was a little confused as well on the first inspection. They said that a gas dryer in a bathroom is prohibited. A way you can get around that is a double-sided vent to allow fresh air to continuously be cycled in and out of that bathroom. So we'll be doing that stackable and we're good to go still for that. Uh, we do have a crawl space actually underneath us right here. So the new water lines that are going to be coming out for the vanity and the toilet have to be wrapped in insulation. So where it runs out in, in the crawl space, there's just insulation wrap. They just need to put on there. Not a huge deal. The new tub upstairs figured it was a clean swap for swap, but we did do a new trap there. So that had to be inspected. And one of the other things that's weird in this town and it, I've never seen it in a town like this, but usually when you hand your plans in the drawings, that accompany the permit, usually the inspector brings them with them the day that they do the inspection. Uh, in this town, you actually need to provide on-site plans. So um, that's definitely something I'm still getting used to here, but that was just an overlook on my part. So when you're renovating old houses, as you guys know, when we were renovating next door, you're always running into surprises. And so we did have a little bit of a slush fund contingency knowing that they're probably gonna run into issues. We did gut the entire place, so one would assume the issues would be minimized, but some few things that we did have to do change orders for were um, sistering up the ceiling joists, joists, because the kitchen ceiling, the dining room ceiling, and the living room ceiling were not even. And so it was either sister them up, do a header, or like have a wonky ceiling. So we did do that. We had to do new framing over here just to better support the second floor. And then originally we were gonna have the coat closet here, but to have a more open concept living space, we ended up putting the coat closet over here, which makes some more sense because it's now like right when you walk into the door. And all of those changes only cost about, do, 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 like 1600 bucks. So not bad for an over 100 year old house. So I'm not mad about it. <laughs> We got all new windows, all new electric, new HVAC. 
So like we're at the point where things get to start being put back together and real visual changes start to happen. Oh, we got a tub. Totally forgot to mention it, but because we're doing this renovation now in the cold weather, one of the things that we've had problems with is HVAC is so overwhelmed with emergency calls, people's heating systems not working. So their schedule is really, really packed. So it's been kind of a slow process getting the HVAC completed, but he was able to get here and finish all of the runs and the return is now hooked in. So it looks like HVAC is completed now too. We do just still need to replace, we were, oh Jesus. What up? Zero Kyle, what's going on man? What's up dude? You're, I'm, uh, I'm actually doing the walkthrough right now on camera. So do you want to explain to the people the, uh, what we had to do for the gas dryer in a bathroom? Uh, air combustion, fresh air combustion. So we have to put vents in instead of doing a louver door. You can either do a louver door, which for a bathroom, we really don't want a louver door. Kind of, you know, defeats the purpose of privacy having a bathroom. Yeah, you definitely so, don't want one when I'm in there. So. So what we're going to do is uh, cut out two holes on both sides of the wall. Yeah. And we're going to put um, wall vents in upside down so you don't, you know, keep your privacy. Cool. Yeah. Um, yep. And that'll air, that'll add the proper air combustion we need for the gas dryer. Awesome. Okay, cool. So uh, electric dryer, wouldn't have to do it, but. So it's either a louver door or, or a vent that, you know, gets you fresh air in there. Yeah, so you have to have one cubic inch for every 1,000 BTUs. Oh, so, so that determines the size of the vent you need. Correct. Yeah, that's cool. I, so, I, didn't, uh, I didn't know that, so I learned that something new, too. Thanks, man. I, I appreciate the call. No problem. All right, brother. I'll talk to you. All right, bye. See? That's why I love these guys. Just knowledgeable, knowledgeable, knowledgeable. I love it. That was a so, lot of mathematics and science that I... Actually, it took me basically <laughs> that whole time to be like, all right, 22,000 BTU, 22, 20 square inch. So an inch per BTU. So, uh, how many zeros <laughs> am I dropping here? <laughs> all right. But I mean, I, we're, we're looking good. I can't wait for this side to get some heat because obviously we share a wall. And that's another thing about living in the uh, renovation that like, we're definitely feeling some radiant cold coming through our side here. So I'm excited for this side to get kind of closed in, insulated, and get some heat flowing in here. So next steps in terms of payment is we agreed that after rough is passed, we'll do the next third. So they'll send that invoice over and then you know, since we're gonna start putting things back together, I'm actually gonna start putting some feelers out for potential renters for like February timeframe, just to see. Um, and then obviously, you know, once we get closer to being done, I'll put out like a real listing with photos and stuff. Now we're actually going to head up north to my parents' house, celebrate my mom's birthday. But we have not been slacking. We continue to grind because our goal was to get a house under contract before the first of the year. We're kind of close. We're and getting we are there. cutting it so close. It is the 18th right now. <laughs> but in the next episode, you will see us put an offer in. We'll see if we get it or not. And uh, as we stand here right now, we still don't know. We're still waiting yeah, to hear back. We don't know. Uh, and then we do a little something special for our tenants for the holidays. So you guys know the drill, like, subscribe. And comment below. I really want to know one of the craziest rules in your market area that a construction office Ooh. requires you to do. Throw in the comments below. I want to hear all of them. It's different for every place. So we'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>